Uh, so like he said, I'll be talking today about in vivo porcine uh, histotripsy brain treatments. Um, all right, so sort of the background of this whole project was, um, as you all know, MR-guided focused ultrasound therapies are sort of limited in the scope of targets they can treat because they're thermal therapies. So uh, bone heating and diffusion of heat out of the target volume sort of limit the scope of targets you can treat to those closer to the skull than two centimeters um, or further away than two centimeters and smaller volumes. But histotripsy <laughs> is a non-thermal therapy that relies on um, uh, ultrasound to generate targeted bubble clouds to do mechanical tissue disruption. And since it doesn't rely on heating, uh, the idea is that it has the potential to treat larger volume targets closer to the skull than you can do with thermal therapies. And just to give you an idea, and we've got a poster on this later, we can target as close to the skull as about five mil millimeters uh, without using aberration correction. And we can target large volume clots up to 40 milliliters using histotripsy through the skull in as little as 25 minutes. So it's really got a lot of potential to treat targets at high food therapies are sort of limited to right now. But we need to demonstrate that we can use histotripsy in the brain without causing um, major consequences like hemorrhage, edema, and swelling. Um, and so that's the goal of this talk, is to demonstrate the experimental results of treating the brain using histotripsy. Um, and so this is the experimental setup that we used to do these um, treatments. Essentially, we performed a craniectomy into the skull of the pig, um, coupled a water bath to the skull, and delivered treatments to the cortex of the brain using the transducer you see up there on the right. And during all these treatments, we had ultrasound guidance and monitoring for targeting and evaluation of treatment um, as it was ongoing. Uh, just to give you an idea of what the experiment looked like, this is the system, the pigs there on the left, the uh, histosonics platform that we used for um, monitoring and controlling the transducers there on the right. So that's what it looks like. Um, to give you an idea of how we can use ultrasound monitoring during treatment, this is a, an image of one of the pig brains that we treated before, during, and after treatment. You see on the left there, pre-treatment, you can see the major structures of the brain really easily in ultrasound, uh, which is really convenient for targeting. Um, during treatment, the bubble clouds are hyperechoic, so you can see them very clearly in ultrasound during treatment to make sure that you're delivering it where you want to. Uh, and after treatment, the lesion remains hyperechoic, so you can um, evaluate damage post-treatment to make sure that you targeted your whole volume that you were intending to. Um, so some post-treatment results of what these lesions look like in MRI. You see here three uh, separate MRI images of pigs that we treated. On the top left, you can see three individual lesions um, just below the cortex in, in one of the gyri there. Uh, on the bottom left, you can see a grid of lesions that we generated. So we can use ultrasound guidance and uh, mechanical repositioning or electrical steering to steer these things sort of arbitrarily to generate any s shape lesion that we want to to create a volume. And on the right there is, you know, University of Michigan, it's obligatory to have an M. So we generated an M-shaped lesion in the brain. Um, to give you an idea of what these lesions uh, look like histologically, we evaluated um, the dose response to histotripsy treatment in the brain. And so dose in this case is a function of the number of pulses you deliver. And so you see at one pulse, there's damage there, but the damage is uh, sparse throughout the uh, lesion site. You see there's pockets of red blood cells uh, in, in uh, the white matter there. At 10 pulses, the damage becomes more complete. Uh, still not all the way there, but at 50 pulses, you can see that the core of the lesion is completely ablated. It's um, infused with red blood cells, but there's no hemorrhage outside the volume of the lesion that we generated. So these lesions are uh, well confined. They're, they're compact, um, which is a, a good indication that we can apply these to the brain without causing at least major hemorrhage events. Um, looking at some of those, so those were single lesions. Looking at what these things look like um, in the large lesion case, you can see here the, from the, one of those MRI images of the large lesion, we put a, a five millimeter wide lesion right in one of the gyri next to the midline. You can see that that lesion volume is filled with blood, but outside of that volume in the uh, white matter and gray matter there, there's little evidence of um, blood infusion outside of the volume. You can look at the boundary of the lesion there on the right in a magnified view. Um, the lesion boundary is sharp. You can see at the bottom right especially that to the left there's uh, acellular debris and blood cells, but to the right the blood, uh, brain cells remain intact. So those were the results from some acute studies, but we also did subacute studies to look at the response of these animals to histotripsy. Um, 
at 72 hours to monitor for things like edema and swelling and um, effects that might not emerge you know, in the acute phase. And so we treated four pigs um, looking at what the response to single lesions was at low or high doses. We also put in larger lesions to see if they responded any differently to larger lesions versus small lesions. Um, just to jump right into the results, these are what the lesions look like after treatment with histotripsy in MRI and uh, morphological sections. Um, so at day zero, immediately after treatment, you can see on the left there in pig one, you're able to see the lesions in MRI. They're small little dots that I have circled there. But at day three, especially for this low dose uh, treatment, the lesions to me at least, aren't very evident. They seem to have sort of resolved themselves. And then in the morphological section, you can see that the lesion there on the left, it's well confined, it's a dark region, but no evident damage beyond that boundary. Um, another pig we did, this one was at 50 pulses instead of 10 pulses, so a little bit higher dose. You can see the lesions much more clearly in imaging, uh, in T1 imaging right after treatment. At day three, they're brightening, so that's indicating that they're sort of resolving. Morph morphologically, again, you can see that they're well contained, uh, no damage beyond the boundaries of the target volume. Um, the larger lesions, again, in imaging, or in MR imaging, you can see them at day one and day three. Um, at day three, the borders of them are brightening up, so again, indicating they're resolving. And in, in morphology, you can see well contained. Same thing with uh, the second large lesion we did. Well contained lesion morphologically, you can see them in MRI, easy to evaluate. Um, but one of the things we were also looking for in these studies was uh, the edema response, and we saw edema in one of the four animals that we treated after three days. You can see it um, in this image that the lesion there is the dark central region on the top left, and edema uh, is that bright halo around it. And extend, it extends about three millimeters around it, but there was no evidence of swelling or um, major anatomical changes associated with this. And we only, again, saw it in one of the animals we treated. So it doesn't seem to be uh, too huge of a thing. Uh, looking at the acute animals, um, the lesions in the acute animals histologically, you can see here is the big lesion from the fourth pig. The, you can see the center of the lesion is full of red blood cells and acellular debris. Uh, but if you look at the magnified view over on the right there, you can see that beyond outside the lesion, uh, there's very little damage. The border zone of this lesion measures about 200 microns wide, so the extent of damage outside of the lesion is very, very minimal. Um, and so, sort of to conclude, we were able to generate these lesions in the brains of pigs, make them arbitrary shapes and sizes. Uh, we could do precision real-time monitoring using ultrasound. Um, there wasn't any evidence of hemorrhage beyond the boundaries of the lesions that we generated when they were confined to within the individual gyrus. Um, we're able to generate damage after a single pulse, and it's complete after 50. Um, MRI is a good tool for monitoring these lesions. And the animals seemed to tolerate it well. They didn't die, and there were no reported problems during the 72-hour recovery period. And pathologically, we were able to um, show that the lesion boundaries are only 200 microns wide. So. Um, no extent of damage beyond the target volume, um, no encephalitis or hemorrhage beyond the volumes. Uh, all the lesions surrounding the lesion, or all, all the cells surrounding the lesion were very viable with um, no acute, subacute, or chronic inflammatory uh, infiltrate. Um, there was no evidence of hemorrhage beyond the boundary, but there was an influx of macrophages indicating that there was active resorption going on. Some mild edema, but it didn't cause any uh, swelling or anatomical changes, and overall, the changes resemble that of a confined subacute infarct. And so that was uh, the whole talk funded by Focus Ultrasound Foundation and Histosonics, and um, thank you. So. <laughs> Quick question. Quick question. Okay. Uh, the infiltration of macrophages is an innate immune response, so it's not just you just can't wipe it off. You also have blood in your cell side in the 181 local. So, so, so that's a little bit of a problem if you're not, unless you're not perfusing your animals, in which so, case that's. Um, I can comment on the, so I think you're probably talking about, um, let me go back here. Yeah. 
these ones, right? So this is partly due to the extraction process. When we um, image these, we have a small bore seven Tesla magnet, and we have to. Hmm? It's it's for the for the histology. There, right there. You got right. blood so, in your soul side. So, so this one, this is the same lesion that you see on the bottom left here, and I think a big portion of this is due to the extraction process. We had to excise the brain immediately after treatment, which led to an upwelling of blood into that, that volume. Also, start thinking about doing T2 star weighted image and T2 star maps because you're missing a bunch of things that may not be there on T1. Have you checked targeting accuracy? Um, so when we did these subacute studies, mm -hmm. we were able to push as close to a millimeter from the midline in, in this. But the, the lesions are appearing where you, you aim them. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Great. All right, so, well, thank you very much.